Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Armen Astvatsatrian. So, Dr. Y for you, professor from Yerevan, Armenia, and today we will talk about evaluation of the pulmonary patient. Okay, the key components of the evaluation of patients with pulmonary symptoms are the history, physical examination, and in many cases, chest X-ray. These components establish the need for subsequent testing, which may include pulmonary function testing and arterial blood gas ABG analysis, computer tomography or other chest imaging tests and bronchoscopy. Okay, let's go and let's start with history. The history can often establish whether symptoms of cough, dyspnea, chest pain, wheezing, streeter and hemoptysis Hemoptysis. So yes, of course, hemoptysis are likely to be pulmonary in origin. No? Cough, dyspnea, chest pain, wheezing, streeter, and hemoptysis are likely to be pulmonary in origin. When more than one symptom occurs concurrently, the history should focus on which symptom is primary. A history should also establish whether constitutional symptoms such as fever, weight loss, and night sweets are present. Other impor important information includes occupational and environmental exposures, family history, travel history, and contact history, previous illnesses and comorbidities, use of prescription over-the-counter or illicit drugs, use of tobacco products or other in-health substances, previous tests results, for example, tuberculin skin test, chest X-rays. Physical examination. Physical examination starts with assessment of general appearance, discomfort and anxiety, uh, body habitus, and the effect of talking or movement on symptoms, for example, inability to speak full sentences without pausing to breathe, Ma? inabilities to speak full sentences without pausing to breathe, and can be assessed while greeting the patient and talking uh, a history and may provide useful informa information relevant to pulmonary status. Uh, next inspection, auscultation, of course, and chest percussions and palpation are done. Okay? Inspection. Inspection should uh, focus on sign of respiratory difficulty, and hypoxemia, for example, restlessness, uh, restlessness, uh, tachypnea, cyanosis, accessory muscle use, signs of possible chronic pulmonary disease, for example, clubbing, yeah, clubbing, yeah, uh, uh, clubbing, yeah, we'll talk about clubbing, okay, pedal edema, chest wall deformities, abnormal uh, breathing patterns, for example, prolonged expiratory time, chain stocks respiration, Kussmaul respiration, jugular venous distension, signs, a sign of hypoxemia, a cyanosis, so uh, bluish discoloration of the lips, face or nail beds, uh, which requires the presence of at least 5 gram deciliter of unsaturated hemoglobin and thus signifies low arterial saturation, less than 85%. The absence of cyanosis doesn't exclude the presence of hypoxemia, obviously. Signs of respiratory difficulty include tachypnea, use of accessory respirator, respiratory muscles, Sternocleidomastoides, sternocleidomastoids, yeah, intercostal scalenes to breathe, 
No, we talk about muscles, huh? Sternocleidomastoideus. Intercostal scalenes to breathe. Intercostal re uh, retractions and paradoxal breathing. Patients with chronic obstructive, obstructive pulmonary disease sometimes uh, brace their arms against their legs or the examination table while seated. That is tripoid, so-called tripod position. In a sub subconscious effort to provide, subconscious of course, pro effort to provide more leverage, more leverage to accessory muscles and thereby enhance respiration. Intercostal retractions in word of movement of the rib interspaces are common among infants and older patients with severe airflow limitation. Paradoxical breathing in word motion of the abdomen during inspiration signifies respiratory muscle fatigue or weakness. Uh, weakness. Signs of possible chronic pulmonary disease include clubbing, barrel chest, the increased anterior posterior diameter of the chest present in some patients with emphysema, and pursed lip breathing. Barrel, barrel chest. Huh? <coughs> clubbing is enlargement of the fingertips or toes due to proliferation of connective tissue between the fin fingernail and the bone. Diagnosis is based on increase <coughs> sorry <coughs> uh, diagnosis is based on an increase in the profile angle of the nail as it exists the finger to more than 180 uh, 180 or an increase in the phalangeal death ratio to uh, spongulous, sponginous, sponginous of the nail bed beneath the cuticle also suggests clubbing. Clubbing is most commonly observed in patients with lung cancer. It is an important sign of chronic pulmonary disease such as cystic fibrosis and idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. It also occurs but less commonly in cyanotic heart disease, chronic infection, for example, infective, infective, infective endocarditis, stroke, inflammatory bowel disease, and cirrhosis. So, clubbing occasionally occurs with oste osteoarthropathy and periostitis, primary or hereditary hypertrophic osteoarthropathy. In this, in, in this instance, in this instance, uh, clubbing may be accompanied by skin changes such as hypertrophied skin on the dorsal of the hands, pachydermoperiostosis, pachydermoperiostosis, seborrhea, and coarse facial features. Uh, digital clubbing can also occur as a benign hereditary abnormality that can be distinguished from pathologic clubbing by the absence of pulmonary symptoms or disease and by the presence of clubbing from an early age, no, by patient report, of course. Barrel chest, so actually uh, the ratio yeah, concerning measuring of finger clubbing no, not not now. Uh, measure measuring finger clubbing. Okay, barrel chest is the increased anterior posterior diameter and the chest present in some patients with emphysema. In pursed lip, in pursed lip breathing, the person uh, exhales through tightly closed lips and inhales through the nose with the mouth closed. The maneuver increases pressure in the airways to keep them open and thereby decreasing gas trapping. Chest wall deformities such as pectus excavatum, pectus excavatum, a sternal depression usually 
beginning over the mid portion of the manubrium and progressing inward through the xiphoid process. And xiphoscoloysis may restrict respirations and exacerbate symptoms of pre existing pulmonary disease. These abnormalities can usually be observed during careful examination after the patient's shirt is removed. Inspection should also include the assessment of the abdomen at the extent of obesity, ascites, or other conditions that could affect abdominal compliance. Abnormal breath patterns may suggest underlying disease process, a prolonged expiratory to inspiratory ratio occurs in obstructive lung disease. Some abnormal breathing patterns cause fluctuations in respiratory rate, to re so respiratory rate should be assessed and count for um, one minute. Chain stocks respiration, periodic breathing as a cyclone fluctuation, fluctuation, uh, yeah. Yeah, fluctuation of respiratory rate and depth, and depth, sorry, depth of course. Uh, from periods of brief apnea, patients breathe progressively faster and deeper hyperpnea, then slower and shallower until they become apne apneic and repeat the cycle. Chain stock chain respiration is most often caused by heart failure. In neurologic disorder, for example, stroke, advanced dementia, or drugs. The pattern in heart failure has been attributed to delays in cerebral circulation. Respiratory centers lag in recognition of systemic acidosis, hypoxia, causing hyperpnea, or alkalosis, hypocapnia, causing apnea. Biot respiration is an uncommon variant of chain stocks respiration in which irregular periods of apnea alternate with periods in which four or five deep equal breaths uh, are taken. It different from chain stocks respiration in that it's characterized by abrupt starts and stops and lacks periodicity. It results from injury to the central nervous system and occurs in such disorder as meningitis. Kussmaul respiration are deep, regular respiration caused by metabolic, uh, metabolic acidosis. Jugular venous distension is evaluated with, uh, with the patient reclining at 45 degrees. The top of the venous column is nor normally just above the clavicles, upper limit of normal 4 cm above the sternal notch in a vertical plane. An increase, in, uh, an increase in height of the column may indicate left ventricular dysfunction, pulmonary hypertension or both and should prompt a search for other signs of cardiac disorders. For example, third heart sound, S3 gallop, dependent edema. Uh, lung auscultation is uh, urgu uh, arguably, arguably, Arguably. So, it's arguably the most important component of the physical examination. All fields of the chest should be listened to, including the flanks of the anterior chest, to detect abnormalities associated with each lobe of the lung. Features to listen for include character and volume of breath sounds, presence or absence of vocal sounds, plural friction wraps, Cardiac auscultation may reveal signs of pulmonary hypertension such as loud pulmonic second heart sound, P2, and of right heart failure such as right ventricular force heart sound, S4 gallop, and tricuspid regurgitation. The character and volume of breath sounds are useful uh, in identifying pulmonary disorders. Vesicular breath sounds are the normal sounds heard over most lung fields. Bronchial breath sounds are slightly louder, harsher, harsher, and higher pitched. They normally can be heard over the trachea and over areas of lung consolidation, such as such as occur with pneumonia. 
Okay, let's try. Eh? Normal breathe sounds. Okay, let, let, let's hear no, normal breathe sounds, please. Okay, I will put micro here to hear more carefully in good quality. So be careful, please, ladies and gentlemen. And it was normal breathe sounds. Okay, once again, normal breathe sounds. Now, please, normal bronchial breathe sounds. Normal bronchial breathe sounds. Once again, please, normal bronchial breathe sounds. Breathe sounds. It were normal bronchial breathe sounds, and before it was normal breathe sounds. Okay, now what? Now crackles, please. Be careful. Crackles once again. Okay, thanks. Wheezing. Okay, wheezing, please. Once again, uh -huh. street door, please, street door. Once again, yeah. Friction rub. Yeah, once again. Yes, once again, once again, third time, please. E to A change. E to A change. Okay, gentlemen. So, uh, crackles, previously called rails, 
actually I do prefer rails but I don't know why they not talk about crackles okay um, for me it was rails it were rails uh, are discontinuous adventure adventures breeze sounds discontinuous dimensional breeze sounds fine crackles are, uh, are short high pitched sounds chorus crackles and longer elastic low pitched sounds crackles have been compared to the sound of crinkling crinkling a plastic wrap on the opening of uh, velcro in intestinal lung disease and can be stimulated by rubbing strands of hair together between two fingers yeah? together between two fingers near once a year they occur most commonly with actelectasis yeah? Uh, alveolar filling processes, for example, pulmonary edema and interstitial interstitial lung disease, for example, pulmonary fibrosis, they uh, signify opening of collapsed airways or alveoli. Ronchi are low pitched respirator sounds that can be heard during inspiration or expiration. They occur in various conditions, including chronic bronchitis. The mechanism may relate to variations in obstruction as airways distant with inhalation and narrow with exhal exhalation. Wheezes are whistling muscle, uh, muscle breath sounds that are worse during expiration than inspiration and involve narrowing of small airways. Wheezing can be a physical finding or a symptom and it's usually associated with dyspnea. Strider is a high-pitched, predominantly inspiratory sound formed by extrathoracic upper airway abstraction. It usually can be heard without a stethoscope. Stridor is usually louder than wheezing, is predominantly inspiratory and is heard loudly, loudly over the larynx. It should trigger a concern of life-threatening upper airway abstraction. Decreased breath sounds uh, signify poor air movement in airways that occurs with asthma and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, COIPD, where bronchospasm or other mechanisms limit airflow. Breath sounds may also be decreased in the presence of pleural effusion, pneumothorax or obstructing endobronchial lesion. Endobronchial lesion. Um, Vocal sounds are heard during auscultation while patients vocalize. Bronchoscopy and whispered and whispered, whispered uh, pectoriloquy, pectoriloquy, pect whispered pectoriloquy occur when the patient's spoken or whispered voice is clear clearly transmitted through the chest wall. Voice transmission results from alveolar alveolar consolidation as occurs with pneumonia. Egophony, E2A change, we listened, is said to occur when during auscultation the patient says the letter E and the examiner hears the letter A, again as occurs with pneumonia. Friction rubs are uh, grating or, cr or creaking sounds that fluctuate, fluctuate with the respiratory cycle and sound like skin rubbing against wet, wet leather. S rubi uh, yes, like skin rubbing against wet leather. Rut, rut, rut. They are a sign of pleural inflammation and are heard in patients with pleuritis or MPMA and after thoracotomy. Inspiratory to expiratory, e to e, I to E uh, ratio is normally 1 to beat is prolonged to 1 per 3 when airflow is limited, such as in asthma and COIPD and even in the absence of wheezing. Percussion and palpation. Uh, percussion is the primarily physical maneuver. So physical maneuver used to detect the presence, of, and, presence and the level of pleural diffusion. Finding areas of dullness, of dullness uh, during percussion signifies underlying fluid or less commonly consolidation. Dum, dum, huh? 
this one this one. Ah, no anyway uh, palpation includes tactile uh, tactile fremitus uh, vibration of chest wall well felt while a uh, patient is speaking it's decreased in pleural effusion and pneumothorax and increased in pulmonary consolidation lobar pneumonias a point tenderness or palpation may signal underlying rib fracture yeah Co uh, costochondrial dis dislocation, costochondrial dislocation, or inflammation, or plural inflammation. A right ventricle impulse at the left lower sternal border may become evident and may be increased in amplitude and duration. Right ventricle ha have, yeah. So right ventricle heave in patients with core pulmonale. So that's all concerning that's all concerning uh, evaluation, right, of a patient with pulmonary problem, of pulmonary patient. Thanks for your attention. Don't forget to make your donations, ladies and gentlemen, because without your donations we can't exist. It will be highly appreciated your donations. So to make these uh, donations, you can find in description of this video or this audio in. Uh, so video in YouTube, of course, and audio in podcast. Our MasterCard. It will be highly appreciated. Or you could make it directly by uh, in YouTube. In YouTube. Uh, there is a possibility to make these donations directly in, by, via YouTube. For example, uh, you can become a sponsor of our channel. Dr. Y channel. Once again, thanks for your attention, see you and ne in next lectures. Don't forget follow and subscribe and put the ring on to be in touch with all news of our channel. So bye.